And ultimately, the uncle probably won. He got Diego cornered for a little bit, and he was like, look, guy, do you understand what this guy's doing? Did you understand that he's selling videos of your ass, and he's making you look like a gay porn star? Are you aware of that? What the fuck are you doing, right? And since Diego is a very impressionable gentleman, I would imagine that his uncle was successful in pulling him out of there, right? Because that's how that kind of thing happens. If you're getting rid of Josh Fabia, I'm gonna guess it was his tough uncle that he respects who finally was like, get off his shoulder, you little fucking weasel. I'm gonna talk to my nephew. Otherwise, I'm going to knock your teeth out of your head and then I'm gonna put your carcass into my garbage disposal because you would fit there. Make some, I'm just gonna make some generalized hypotheses based on information that is available, okay? And timing, etc. those kinds of things, right? Also, before we just move right along, with this whole thing. I'm gonna show you some stuff, okay? Now, I did a video, some of you may have seen it, where I went through Diego's OnlyFans and I read the captions for some of the more alluring posts, you know, don't you wanna see that tight butt? And um, you wanna see something sexy and enticing, but not sex, if you recall. And I got a lot of comments from people like, why didn't you buy the posts? And the answer that I gave them every single time was, because the posts were going to be bait and switch. They were going to be, ooh, check out this enticing blah, blah, blah. And it was gonna be him like bent over stretching or him like fighting, but like they take a picture from the back or some weird shit that has no, like where Diego is not actively participating in this, right? And that's why I said he was exploiting Diego. Now, someone who I appreciate very much uh, went ahead and bought a few of these for me, right? They were just, I, cause I told, they emailed me, I told him the same thing and he was like, so he went ahead and he bought a few of these and he sent them to me and guess who was right? Me, okay, me. But before we move right along with this thing, okay, so before we get out of the entire Joshua Fabia and Diego Sanchez business, I wanna show you these to demonstrate that A, I was correct and B, how sleazy this actually was, okay? Because this was actually even more sleazy than I expected. Like I thought it was just gonna be like a straight up pure and simple bait and switch, right? Check out that tight butt and then it's Diego training, right? Now, what this actually is, is Joshua setting up a camera. Okay, I'm, I'm not joking. Okay, check out that tight butt. That specific one was him setting up a camera across from Diego in the octagon on the top of the fence and then telling the team that he's training to stretch in a certain way that was going to make sure that Diego was bent over with his ass towards the camera. You think I'm joking. And then he was gonna put, you know, sleazy music behind it. It's like, ooh, look at that tight butt without Diego's knowledge. Did I not say that? Did I not say that in the last video? I said, I bet you Diego doesn't even know about this. You wanna know how I knew that? Because I think Josh Fabia is a sleazy scumbag and I was correct, okay? Watch this, okay? This is, do you wanna see that tight butt, okay? And keep in mind, Josh Fabia is leading this exercise, right? Boom. Listen to the music. Shameless. Unreal, dude. Unreal. Okay. Seriously. <laughs> he set a camera up across from Diego. He gave instructions so that Diego would turn around and bend over and stretch. And then Josh took that video and then put music behind it, okay? And then put it on OnlyFans and sold it for $5. $5, okay? It's like a mix between like a creep voyeur, a pimp, and uh, I don't know, someone really short, right? So <laughs> again, hopefully what happened is my color is very off. I don't know what that's about. I don't care, okay? My, I don't think anybody is watching this because you're like, gosh, I just want to see his skin tone. But my skin's not actually as red. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, whatever. But so anyway, uh, I, hopefully someone saw that video who was close to Diego and they went and talked to his family and they were like, hey, did you guys know that this guy that he's with, he's not only telling you to, he's not even to, to, just telling Diego to like exclude his family from his life. He's also 
exploiting him sexually, like for real, okay? Like he is telling him to bend over in front of the camera and then he's taking videos of it. And then he, without Diego's knowledge, is putting weird music behind it and then he's selling it on OnlyFans. Can you believe that? And then he's keeping 50%. He's telling Diego that he's getting 50%, but something tells me he's not getting 50%. So yeah, so I was right. And uh, hopefully someone, you know, grabbed Diego and was like, listen, hey pal, you know, I know I, I like this Josh guy, but I think we need to have a conversation. Let's say his uncle, you know, because I remember his uncle was a savage. I remember this from a long time ago and his, and his uncle seemed a lot more kind of like socially normal. And he was like, he was so proud of Diego. I can imagine that guy going to Diego's house and being like, hey, we need to talk, buddy. Okay. We need to have a conversation. And I can picture Joshua Fabia being involved where he is always involved, like sitting on Diego's shoulder, like a little garden gnome from hell and just going, hey, anything that you could say to Diego, you can say to me. And Diego's all, yeah, anything you could say to me, you can say to Joshua. And Joshua's all, that's right, little doggy. You keep saying the things I tell you to say, Diego. And the uncle was like, I have a better idea. How about I talk to my nephew by myself or else I'm going to crumple you into a ball and throw you through the fucking wall, you little garden gnome fuck face. And Joshua was like, Diego, are you gonna let him talk to me like that? And Diego looked and realized, this is my uncle. Like, uh, you know, this is, this is my uncle. I, he used to throw me around when I was a child. So whether or not I could beat him in a fight or not, he has this huge mental thing where I'm not gonna talk shit back to him. I'm just not, he's my uncle. And so if he's demanding, that, uh, that he speaks to me alone, my instincts are telling me to let him speak to me alone. And ultimately, the uncle probably won. He got Diego cornered for a little bit and he was like, look, guy, do you understand what this guy's doing? Did you understand that he's selling videos of your ass and he's making you look like a gay porn star? Are you aware of that? What the fuck are you doing, right? And since Diego is a very impressionable gentleman, I would imagine that his uncle was successful in pulling him out of there, right? Because that's how that kind of thing happens. If you're getting rid of Josh Fabia, I'm gonna guess it was his tough uncle that he respects who finally was like, get off his shoulder, you little fucking weasel. I'm gonna talk to my nephew. Otherwise, I'm going to knock your teeth out of your head and then I'm gonna put your carcass into my garbage disposal because you would fit there, okay? Now, Diego, let's go have a conversation. Little weasel garden gnome, you go stand by the garbage disposal because that's where you're going if you interrupt me and my nephew having a conversation, okay? So keep that in mind when I know your instincts are gonna to be to come over here. But see, like, I'm not Matt Sarah, right? Like, Matt Sarah, he has self-control. You know, I'm not those guys in the room. They have self-control. I'm Diego's uncle. I'm fucking crazy, okay? I don't like you. If you come within any, any kind of vicinity of my hands, they're going to be used to break your neck. So sit by the garbage disposal. If you interrupt our conversation, you're going in it, okay? Little garden gnome, run along. And then his uncle saved his life, you know? And I think a lot of that probably had to do with the OnlyFans. Now, one thing I would be remiss if I didn't show you guys is I found something really weird. Uh, actually, I didn't find it. Someone else found it, okay? So have a look, see at this. This is another thing that uh, Diego or Josh Fabia posted. That is Diego, nude in a river, grappling one of his teammates. Yep, Joshua suggested that they get naked and then get into a river and then practice leg locks. Yep, so basically, from what I can tell now, oh look, my color's back, <laughs> weird. So uh, what I can tell is that uh, Josh Fabio was leveraging his situation as the coach of this team in order to put these guys in compromising positions so that he could sell those videos and photographs online as if they were gay porn. Uh, and I don't think I'm going out on a limb on that, to be honest with you, because all of these things are things that Joshua set up. Oh, my color's gone again. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But uh, let's just say everyone is glad that Diego is out of that relationship. Although, let's see how this really shakes out, because if I know cult leader relationships, Sometimes, you know, the kind of person that can end up in a relationship like that can end up with another strong personality, like the uncle who threatened to put Josh Fabia into the garbage disposal. And then he'll be like, you're right, you're right, you're right. And then he'll go with them. He'll say, I'm never doing business with this guy ever again. I hate him. And then five minutes later, Josh Fabia is gonna be like, Diego, we've gone through way too much, man. We've gone through too much for you to do me like this. I need to have a conversation with you. Diego's like, Josh, it's over. No, it's not, man. 
I mean, that's fine. You know what? I respect that, dude. I actually respect you taking. I, I respect you taking the reins on your own life, man. I do, I do. But I, I feel like maybe you're listening to other people, and I just need to have a man to man with you, man. I just we've gone through a lot. You and I, we need to have a man to man. All right. So I'm gonna come over there. We're gonna talk, he, Josh. <laughs> He's not gonna let you come over here, okay? He's not gonna let you come. Then meet me out, man. Just meet me out, okay? Just meet me out. Fine. They meet up, and all of a sudden, Joshua's his coach and his manager again. You know, that kind of thing does happen. It is a very similar relationship to uh, an ex-boyfriend everybody tells you is bad for you, little girl. He's shit for you, and he's like, listen, like, I know what they're saying, and I think you're so strong now. I actually think you are really coming into your own as a woman, but, I just, I need, I, there are some things I need to say before you go. Just a couple things I need to say before you go. Can we meet up just once? I can come to you. You can't come here. That's fine. We can meet wherever you want, wherever you feel comfortable. And then they meet, and then five minutes later, you know. Let me just go ahead and put your pants and underwear on the dashboard while we reconnect in a way that's going to make this permanent. Anyway, so that's what I've got. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and bye-bye, little garden gnome.